Shalom, Israel. The star of David. Is it of Esau or of Jacob? So we're going to look at why are the children of the house of Israel or the house of Judah adoring a piece of jewelry on their borders, on their clothing, on their cars as a sign of righteousness and calling it the star of David or the shield of David. So what are we going to look at with the help of the scriptures and the Ruach? Where did the star of David originate from? Also, we're going to look at if it's from the house of Esau or from the house of Judah. Which one of those represents the star of David? And the last question us of Israel we're going to look at is what tabernacle are we representing here on this earth until Yeshia returns. And again, this lesson is on the Star of David, the tabernacle of Moloch, one of Satan's false prophets. We're going to go look at the word. As always, start off with our knowledge. So we're going to look at two different tabernacles to start off with. One that represents the creator, Ahaya Shah Ahaya. And one that represents Satan and his lies and deception. So the first one we're going to look at is in Exodus 33, 7. And it reads, And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And that's one tabernacle we look at that the Most High wanted everybody to be included in that was in the house of Israel. We'll look at more of the scripture later. And now we're going to look at a tabernacle that is not of the Most High. Number 16. I'm going to read verses 23 and 24. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get ye up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abram. And again, we're going to look at this in a lot more detail as we go on. But here there's two tabernacles that the Most High is telling us. One to be a part of and one not to be a part of. Now we're going to look at from the scriptures what would be a good tabernacle and which one would be a bad tabernacle and if the star of David is involved in either one. So the first scriptures we're going to go in depth is the Psalms. Chapter 78. And with all those things we're trying to get. We're trying to get understanding from the Most High. So we'll let the word speak. Psalm 78 verse 1. Give an ear, O my people, to my law. Decline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark saying of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our, their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength 
and his wonderful works that he have done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. So we look at so far in the psalm in this letter that from generation to generation from all our children we should be passing on the commandments. And this is one of the tabernacles we're looking at. We're passing on the commandments of the Most High to our children. The law and every word that the Creator has given to us. We're going to keep looking at the word. We're in 78. We're going to go down to verse 35 through 42. And 35 says, And I remember the God was their rock and the high God, their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. <clears throat> For their heart was not right with him. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he being full of compassion. Forgave their iniquity. And destroyed them not. Yea, many a time he turned his anger away. And did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh. A wind that passes away. And cometh not again. How often do they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turn back and tempted God and limit the Holy One of Israel. They remember not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. So this is really rich. I look at this and, um, especially when I apply it to myself, you know, it's a blessing that, um, he remembers that we are flesh and we're not spiritual. And it gives us this grace, this mercy to give us a chance to get it right. Um, this is so important that so many are teaching. Let that judgment come upon us right now, right here. But the blessing, if you truly love your family, is another day to get it right with the family. With your loved ones. Another chance to preach the gospel of the kingdom. That is so important. So we won't be grieving him like our forefathers did in the wilderness. But now we're going down to verse 55 through 61. Chapter 78, and it reads, He cast out the heathen also before them, and divided them an in inheritance by line, and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. Yet they tempted and provoked the Most High God, and kept not his testimonies, but turned back and dealt unfairly like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bull. For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. When God heard this, he was raw and greatly adored Israel. So that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among men. And he delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. So we see that in this last verse we're looking at that the Most High placed his tabernacle in Shiloh with the purpose of us teaching our children, children's children, and children to keep the commandments. 
and he kept giving us different breaks and understanding that we were flesh, that we weren't a spiritual creature. But at the end, we then pissed off a higher. And he took his tabernacle away from us and put us in the land of our captivity because of graven images. Don't make any images above or no image below. We raft them to jealousy. So we know if we belong to the tabernacle here on this earth to the most high, the good one is that we're keeping his commandments that we keep his law and we're not making any graven images whatsoever. As it said, that is a Jacob. Now we're going to look at what a bad tabernacle is. A false tabernacle. One that Satan has told to the world and deceived many a brethren of watching and follow. Amos chapter 5, verse 1. Hear ye this word which I take up against you, even a lamentation, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel is fallen. She shall no more rise. She is forsaken upon her land. There is none to raise her up. For thus saith the Lord God, the city that went out by a thousand shall leave in hundred, and that went forth by a hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek me, and ye shall live. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So if you're seeking the kingdom house of Israel, that is what you need. But we're going to keep reading Amos and see if that's what Israel was actually seeking. We're going to go down to verse 14 and 15. Amos chapter 5. Verse 14. Seek God and not evil that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as he has spoken. Hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. So are you seeking good? Are you seeking after the Most High? Only his commandments. Not the commandments of men. that are distorting the word. We're down to verse 18. Chapter 5 of Amos. Woe unto you. That desire the day of the Lord. To what end. Is it for you. The day of the Lord is darkness. And not light. As if a man did flee. From a lion. And a bear. Met him. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, no brightness in it? So we got so many men of Israel and people of the world that keep teaching that the day of the Lord and they can't wait for it to happen. One thing you got to understand. Is once the day of the Lord come. There's not going to be no more. Repentance or forgiveness of the sin. So I know we all have brothers. Sisters. Wives. Children. Aunts. Uncles. Kinsmen. Neighbors. That haven't came into the truth. And once that day of the Lord hits, there is certain death and hell to follow for those that are not faithful. See, I understand that the day of the Lord will come. That's the reason why I preach the gospel of the kingdom. 
but it's not my hearting to watch everyone die. Knowing that I still have loved ones that have not repented from sin. Just as me, as Paul says, I don't want to find myself coming up short as that day approaches. So I'm thankful for his grace. I'm thankful for his mercy. Our commission is to go out to each nation and preach the kingdom preach that gospel of good news of it. And we've got people talking about it, but they're adding to the word. We're going to finish off in verse 25 and 26. Chapter 5 of Amos. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O ye house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch, and chin you and your images, the star of your God, which you made to yourselves. So in this false tabernacle we see right here, that was pitched in the wilderness, not the one that the Most High gave to us, but the one that he told us that was unrighteous, bear the what? A star. And for that reason, none of our feast days, none of our sacrifice we have are pleasant to him. That he ignores us completely. And again, he said that tabernacle we have is born of Moloch. And he has graven images and a star to your God. So are you representing the star of David? Is that the part of Moloch? See, we're looking at two different tabernacles. Which tabernacle are you striving to reflect? The gospel of the kingdom? With all his commandments and his laws? Are you a reflection of that when people see you? Or do you have graven images? Adorned in your cars? In your house? around your neck things that the Most High got rid of our forefathers for are we still now doing it to this day so we look at these things so most importantly we can get a better understanding of what it is the Most High the Creator wants from us so we can have that relationship with Him and we can bear out his fruit, his word. Now we're going to look at a little bit of history. And our history is going to look at a clear picture of where that star David originated from. What line does it come from? Does it come from Esau or does it come from Jacob? So with that, we're going to go to the word, Genesis 25, verse 19 through 34. Genesis 25, verses 19 through 34. It talks of Isaac and Rebekah. They conceived a child. They conceived twins. One named Esau. The other one named Jacob. Esau, the older brother, came out red and hairy, different from Jacob. Now, in this lesson, in this teaching, we're focused on Esau's spirit, which the Most High is always telling you to focus on. If someone's teaching you to focus on a skin color, they're actually telling you something different from what the Most High has taught you. Now, I will bear that fruit out in the Word. But Esau came out red and hairy. We're going to look at a picture right now of red and hairy. And actually, as you look at this picture, you got to understand that this picture is white with red hair. 
He said he came out red and hairy. We're also going to look at some other scriptures where they call somebody broody or red in the word. And as we look at this, understanding that the Most High wants you to look at the spirit of a man and a woman so you can determine righteousness from that. Ahiah, the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not interested in your color. You will go to hell straightway in the bullet if you don't keep the commandments laws and you can be saved if you do the latter. But to get understanding for that we can go to 1 Samuel verse 16 and 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth, for a man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And we're going to see how important it is for the Father to look at your heart. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 He tells us to be like him Not to look at the continents or the height or the stature But to look at the inward part of the person The spirit, not the outward appearance Now we're going to go down To verse 12 and 13 to understand why the Most High has said that. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was Rudy, and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look at. And the Lord said, Arise, and knowing him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went up and went to Ramah. So this is David being anointed, getting ready to be king of all of Israel. As far as we can see in the scripture, the most righteous king here on earth that we've ever had until Yeshua comes. That he was Rudy. No different from what we see from Esau. But Esau is not of the father. And David was. So it wasn't being red. Or white. Or black. That made the most high. Love or hate. The individual. It's the spirit. Now don't get me wrong. I'll be the first one to tell you to watch out for a white person, a Mexican, even a black man. I mean, if they're not keeping the commandments, if they're willing to do evil to you or your family, you should be aware of them. Knowing the history of what white folks have done to the children of Israel, you must also understand that the Most High has done that to us as well as to them. It's our punishment for not keeping the commandments and the law. And that's also part of their judgment to see if there will be righteous amongst us and with us. But we still got to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Again, I I'm not mad at anyone that teaches. They're checking up on a white man. Or to look at what they have done. Because your children should not be ignorant. 
But the most important, if you're trying to truly reflect the most high, is you're looking at the spirit of every individual that comes across you. The most high. That's his teaching to you. And these people are teaching. Crack of this, crack of that. Black man going to rule. White man going to be a slave. He's going to be a servant. They have no idea what they're talking about. The Most High is going to separate the, the wheat from the tares. He will line up the 12 tribes of Israel. There could be a white person looking at you today. They could have a black daddy. He could be of the house of Israel. They could be light-skinned. They can be of the house of Israel. I don't mean they're Ichikar. I don't mean they're Gad. You have no idea what tribe they are from. Only idea you know for a fact is that you must keep the commandments and you let the most high separate everything when it's all said and done that is your commission I tell you I am Judah I tell you that because there are signs or a place upon me I can't tell you if I'm from Benjamin or Levi or Judah itself but more importantly than that physically me being Judah it means absolutely nothing if I don't have the spirit of the Most High dwelling in me. So that is what we need to be. And that's what we need to reflect. Esau and David were definitely different from birth. And not different from birth because of skin color alone. Because of the spirit that dwelled in them. So we're going to keep looking at the word. Keep letting the most high give us understanding for all those things that we need. So we're going to look at. What it means. That Esau. And his line. Where did it come from? So we're going to let the word. Guide us a little bit more. In Genesis chapter 36. Verse 5. We see Korah. Was the son of Esau. And Abamah. It's one of the descendants that Korah came from that line. So Esau descended. We see in the book of. Of Genesis chapter 36. When the ancestors were Korah. As we move past that. Genealogy right there. We go into the book of Exodus. And we see where. They dwelled. In the land of Egypt. Israel and the strangers. And we see the most high. Preparing us physically and spiritually to leave our land of our captivity so we can go into the wilderness, try to become righteous for our forefathers to turn away from all the evil that they ever have known and go into the bosom of the Most High. We see him preparing us physically and mentally with his Feast days. With the power. With the hand. His mighty hand that took us out. But now. We're going to look at. Korah. And see. If this genealogy. Traces back to. Jacob. The house of Israel. Or. Esau, the older brother. And again, as we look at the word, 
so many teach of the physical appearance or the physical thing. But the father looks at the spiritual. So as we go into the genealogy of Korah, we're going to understand it's the spirit that led this to. And and better understanding of how we, the children of Israel, are supposed to behave and act. Now, Exodus chapter 6, 21 cites another Korah, not of the genealogy of Esau, but this Korah was of the genealogy of Levi, direct descendant of Jacob, one of the twelve tribes. They also show you this in First Chronicles 6, that whole chapter. Again, repeats this genealogy. Exodus talks of this genealogy that this Korah, K-O-R-A-H, is one of the great-grandsons of the patriarch Levi and therefore was a cousin of Moses and Aaron. We're going to get into the book of Numbers. 16 and see what happened with this Korah. How this person of the house of Israel went astray, created a star of Moloch. In understanding the reading that we'll have, number 16 will also tell you that Korah, Dathan, and Abram, all being co-conspirators, died in that same day. And another 1,470, 700. Men were struck with plagues as punishment for objecting to Korah's destruction. Now the children of Korah, as we'll see in Numbers and other parts of the word, those children decided to take a different path. But the father, being of the house of Israel, continued in idolatry, in pagan ways, and created and helped maintain that star of Moloch that we see that the Edomites brand to this day. And with that being said, now we'll let the word speak. So we're going to look at Number 16, verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Korah, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abraham, the sons of Elab, and On, the son of Pelah, the son of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy and will cause him to come there unto him, even him. 
whom he hath chosen, will he cause to come near unto him. This do, take your censures, Korah, and all his company, and put a fire therein, and put the incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth chose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Hear, I pray you, ye sons of Levi. Seemeth it be a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he hath brought thee near to him and all thy brethren, thy sons of Levi with thee and seek ye the priesthood also. For which cause both thou and all they company are gathered together against thee, Lord? And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abram, the sons of Elad, which said, We will not come up. It is a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that flows with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us moreover thou hast not brought us into a land that flows with milk and honey or given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards wilt thou put out the eyes of these men we will not come up And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou in all thy company before the Lord, thou and thy and Aaron tomorrow. And take every man his censer, and put incense in them. And bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, 250 censers. Thou also, and Aaron, each of you, his censer. And they took every man his censer, and put fire in them, and laid incense therein, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin? And wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abram. And Moses arose up and went into Dathan and Abram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and thou nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they gave up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abram on every side. And Dathan and Abram 
came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby he shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die, the coming death of all men, or if they visit after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has sent me. But the Lord make a new thing, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up with all the approaching unto them. And they go down quick into the pit. Then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of the speaking of all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that I pretend unto Korah and all their goods that they and all that appertain them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed up them and they perished from among the congregation and all Israel that were around and about them fled at the cry of them for they said lest the earth swallow us up also and there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that offered incense. So it was just read into our learning so we can get some understanding was um, number 16. And there we talked about Korah, not the Korah, the descendant of Esau, but Korah, the descendant of Levi. Now, being the son of one of the Levites made him the cousin of Aaron and Moses. And we see in the word that after the Most High, after Ahiah, Shah Ahiah, took us out of our captivity, took us out of our bondage, and put us in the wilderness, that it was one of the... Um, Levites, one of the descendants of the Levites by the name of Korah that uh, brought that idolatry, brought that star of Moloch, brought that fake worship back into the congregation that um, brought confusion into the body of the Most High. So even when we get the word and we're supposed to be getting transformed, us as Israelites need to keep an eye out for those grievous wolves that will bring in false doctrine, false teaching. Even with the Most High guarding us, we see Korah, again, of the house of Jacob, an Israelite that brought in those heresies and that bad teaching. And the same way we can look at these brothers that live nowadays with these Star of Moloch on them, six pointed stars. And it's not that they don't know, they know all these things, as we say. They bring in this teaching that is false and not of the Most High. We also see when we are reading a word about Esau, about him being red and ruddy, again, we can see this teaching from so many Israelites that the only thing that they're teaching you is that you are. Of the house of Israel. That you're in the house of Jacob. And because you're black. You were the people of the book. And yes that's very true. But what we got to truly know and understand. Is that the people of the book. A lot of them died in the wilderness. And would not. Could not. And will not. Enter into the most High's rest. So there's more than just knowing that you're Israel that was going to lead you to salvation that will give you uh, a place in the promised land. 
And more importantly, what the goal is to give you eternal life. So, being white, if you're a white man or white woman, you must keep the commandments. If you're a Hispanic man or woman, you must keep the commandments. If you're Asian, Indian, or some type of red man, you must keep the commandments. And by all means, if you're the house of Jacob, you are Israel. You must keep the commandments. There's so many doctrines and teachings going on that give you a portion of the truth but do not build to the, the will of the Most High. Even when Satan was in the garden with Eve, he taught her portions of the truth. But those portions of the truth got them kicked out of the, of the garden of Eden. So, with this being said, it wasn't the line of Esau that brought the star of Moloch to us in the wilderness. It was from the line of Jacob, from the Levites, from his grandson, that brought that star of Moloch into the worship. And he was a man of renown. That means all the people knew him. So he was passing that false teaching and doctrine on to as many people as they can. Another thing that I really want you to see out that word that we read is that even though Korah died and the people that follow him, there is still salvation for you if you keep the commandments because Korah kids they did you'll see that in Chronicles and other places in the word where the Korites even were with David in the um, caves so keeping the commandments it doesn't matter what your grandpappy did it don't matter what your grandmama did it don't matter what your mom or your daddy do it's ultimately what's going to matter is what you will do. And if you have that relationship with the Most High, that you are striving to keep his word. So with that being said, we're going to go to the last part of this video. And we're going to look and see if that star David originated from the house of David, which they gave the name to, or did it originate from his son, Solomon. So with that, we're going to let the word speak. Here we go. 1 Kings chapter 11, <clears throat> verse 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, the Ammonites, Edomites, Zendonites, and Hittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel. Ye shall not go into them, neither shall thy come into you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these love. And he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was his heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zenonites, and after Milcom, the Abit Abination, abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Then did Solomon build in high places for Chemosh, the, ab the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of of the children of Ammon. And likewise. Did he. For all his strange wives. 
he burnt incense and sacrifice unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning these things, that he should not go after the gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore, the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and I will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding, in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake. But I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem the sake which I have chosen. Now, in that reading we read from verse 1 to 13. And we can see that in any day and age, Solomon was straight freaky. He had all sorts of different women, Edomites and Edom, and as we said, red and hairy, white possibly, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Zedonites, the Hittites. So he had white, black, Asian. He had every line and color you can think of. Now, he made altars, symbols, and on the line that we see down in line 7, even for Moloch. And we know Moloch, they had that star. So he had abominations all over. And he did this for women's sake, for the love of his women. Not for the love of his creator, the Most High, but the love of women. Even though in the commandments, we see a commandment that would keep him from having these many wives. We see commandments that would tell him not to do these things. He still turned away from it for his own lust and his own desires. So while he was making all these false idols and images, of course, he couldn't have been keeping the Sabbath day. He couldn't have been doing none of the things that the Most High told us not to do. And again, another commandment is not to make any graven images whatsoever. And we see that he did that up and down the line. Now we could turn the scriptures for King David's sake and see what all the idolatry that he made, but of course he did not make any. So when they come up with the star David, nowhere in scripture you'll see a star of David. Or that he did anything of that nature of making any false idols or imagery. But we do see that from his son. That he made all these images of worship, false gods. And we also see in Second Kings. Where other kings. Second Kings verse 10. Where we see. Jezebel that killed all those different men and we see the king of Israel at that time loving after her and also keeping his own will to serve after other gods so after David a righteous king died we see how the kingdom got tore up from the floor of and they went after one God, after another God, and it never did stop. And we can see how Jeremiah tells us in 10 not to have no way of the heathen. He even tells us not to cut out down Christmas trees, things we still do to this day. So from the house of Ahab, Jeroboam, and of course it started off with David's son, Solomon. So that would be the seal of Solomon that you have. 
part of the closing that we want to read. We look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And the Apostle Paul wrote, Do not be mismatched with unbelievers. But what partnership is there between the righteous and the lawlessness? Or what fellowship is there between the light and the darkness? What agreement does Christ have with Belair? Or what does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from them and be ye separate from them saying the Lord and touching nothing unclean. And I will welcome you and I will be your father and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So just reading that, why do you have idolatry symbols on top of your body and adoring them? Everything in the word tells us that we are the temple. Of the living God. There are Elohim. Adonai. Our creator. Ahaya Sharahaya. Supposed to dwell in us. That we don't need to make any symbols. Above, below, in the water. That we are the symbol of the Most High. That we are witness of his creation. That we are the witness of his beauty. And anything that we put on us. Any symbol, cross, six-pointed star, star David, whatever we put on us, just messes up the original copy. So, in closing, we definitely see that that's definitely not the star of David, but it's the seal of Solomon. And when you understand it's the seal of Solomon, it sealed his fate. It sealed his fate that he could not keep the kingdom and that Israel had to go back into captivity. And here we remain until the Most High come gets us again. So if you want to have that seal, then you'll share in his fate. Or you could come out of that idolatry, witchcraft, false religion, Turn aside all these black men that would teach you a portion of the truth, but not have the knowledge of what it means to have eternal life. Don't search for a camp. Don't search for a church. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and he will add eternal life to you. Shalom, Israel.